I have provided this video of an actual critique, actually a couple different critiques from my figure drawing class from the spring of 2013. This provides an opportunity for beginning students to understand how a critique, a group critique, should actually work. The kinds of things that we talk about, the way that we talk about them, and it just helps students to get an idea of how they need to prepare for this time and what is appropriate and what is not appropriate within the time of the critique. Um, and so there will be different uh, questions and ideas that are raised through the text as we go through this. Okay. Um, so let's compare it back and forth, and Gigi's is right under, underneath that. Let's do comparison just between those two pieces. What would you say besides what we just did? Well, it looks like she used um, a value throughout the whole thing and then darkened, darkened or lightened where it needed to be, where the other one is just um, like a lot of white. And then she added a negative space. Yeah. Okay. Compositionally, what about this one? Well, like how I had positioned the pole, like the, the stick that he was holding has a downward movement, but then you get into the hand and has like a, a it moves you back to the right side, and then you get to his leg, and the leg kind of goes like shifts you up and then back down. Well, like Daniela's, her composition, like her pose that she has, is actually really good. But I wish she would have took up the whole, the whole page. Hey, I yeah, know that's like. That's Bring a problem that I have. What, what are people often afraid of when it comes to composition? When we're thinking that it's going to be too big, we're afraid that what is going to happen? It's not going to yeah. fit. So everything has to fit in there to make it a good composition? No. no. Okay. So if we all know that, let's think about what makes a good composition. So if you would have done a composition like the charcoal one up here where the head is cut off, that would have been much more interesting because it would have been... It has a very horizontal composition, but then you have that vertical, like very vertical composition, but then she has that one horizontal line that breaks it up in half. That would have been very interesting. Yeah. When you cut off the head, you focus more on the body, so therefore like I'm focusing a lot more on the muscle tones and the values within that muscle. So that makes it a little bit more interesting because you're not focused on what this person looks like here. We've got another option of color. Let's discuss that one. I think it would have been a lot better if it was darker or done with a different medium. Just because the yellow it washes out. Yeah, and then the blue is also like a light blue, so you get an idea of where the value is, but you can't really see what the figure is. Yeah, like it, it, the blue would have been fine if it had been over top a color that was a little bit easier to see, or if it was on a different color paper. What I noticed on Nicole's and even Donald's is like a problem that I have is like. I always make mine too light because I'm always scared to shade, but they did a really good job of keeping it really light but using the highlights as a way to show like the muscle tone and the contours and stuff. I do think the one in the upper right hand corner um, has very good value because our light source is obviously from above and whoever did it did a really good job of showing that the light source is coming from above. Okay, so I noticed that the bone overlay on this one particular hand looks pretty decent for a bone overlay and it actually shaved it. But then I turned it over and I noticed that uh, the actual hand was yeah. not seems too shaded and there's something strange on the middle finger or maybe a ring, but I think it's well shaded and the thing below it is a little less paid attention yeah. to. It. Well and I also really like that Agnes did both sides. Like when you when you pull it up yeah, on the Yeah her overlay, hands are really she did, good. I think she did each side of the hand. Show them, oh, it's show front them. and back. That's what yeah, she was showing. Okay. Cool. I really like that she did that. Okay, who wants to come? I mean, you might need to get a little closer to look at them. <laughs> Here, you can even touch down. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of detail in it, like wrinkle wise, the fingers. And you see a lot of the detail in the nails. You see some of the bones coming up at the top of the hand. That has really good values. From here, it looks very fleshy, very much real. This one, even as I'm sitting far back, I can still see like the bones really well, like in between the little joints and everything. So that has really good value. I think it needs a little bit of both, like a little bit more highlights and in like another tone, maybe like a brown. In there, so, but what about yeah. what about the bone part? You'll want to have with you 
this form that has all the different criteria that we're going to be talking about during the critique. You can mark the positive and negative comments that you get about the work and it will help you to uh, take down some notes about suggested improvements that you can make. So here is another day in the same class. Well, this first one right here, um, it's very light, but um, if it were to be a bit darker, it'd be a bit more visible, but I really do like how um, they used all the different colors to create the different values, and then also the background colors, they also have value, which just adds to it, and it looks really nice. Well, like if they used different colors to make the value stand out more, they could have overall made it look a lot more shaded and less light. In the figure specifically? Is that what you guys mean about using different colors? In the yeah. figure, yes. Okay. The one in the middle does that. It has darker values. The it, colored one? Yes. Okay. It, it's also incomplete. Maybe if they added like a background color like some of the others did, it would fill up. The, it would look like the space was a bit more filled, but right now it does look like there's a lot of negative space. A compositionally, it's central. And then with the line going down straight down the back, it just centralizes everything. So it's very, like, it's kind of cut in half to me. Yeah. So it's just very central, centered, you know. It, it doesn't really allow your eye to move easily around. Also could have put a platform um, that the person is on would have helped at least the lower portion. While it would take away from just the straight up and down. Well, she could have also put like more of a pattern, like the, in the one above it, how that has a pattern going on. That makes it interesting to look at as well. I do love the use of textures in this and how they use completely different texture for a background than they do. I just think since that is the bottom of it, it should use a horizontal line somewhere just to ground it. Because the one up top, it's, you know, his top section, so it doesn't really need that. It works well with just a background, but this one, it needs something there, okay. or else it's just floating. What does that hatched background actually do to that, that top one there? It gives it depth and movement, okay. because the, the, the hatching pattern that she used as a background, you know, it has such a blank... Like, if she didn't have it, it had a blank corner on that right corner. So with that hatching pattern, it brings you right back down to, to the, the, the wood that he's holding and gives you that movement, that extra movement to keep looking through the composition. I think this one is a really good background. Mm -hmm. It's not too, Yeah, because there's a lot like, of variety. Yeah. Interesting. A lot of different shades. It's not killing you. I like the composition also. Most of the um, other pictures either have just the chest or... And they had the feet, but they're cut off, like at the bottoms. Um, down here, it has the lines going up, and then it gets darker up here, and then lighter up here. It kind of just brings your eye up from his feet all the way up to his back. And then it gets darker again at the top. So it kind of just moves your eye up from the bottom all the way up to the top. And um, the far one here, by using the blue tones to contrast the warmer tones, it actually helps the figure pop out more. Whereas, like, by using the purples and the blues, it kept you know, that plastic color theory comes in and it pushes the background farther back and allows the subject to come forward. So much going on at the bottom, so much different um, value and texture that your eye is automatically drawn there before moving up. And for me, I go straight to the lighter, the widest area. Okay. Because I see like a, like a pattern going down, like dark light, like dark light, dark light, dark light. So I go straight to the middle part where it's all white and then I slowly come down because the graduate, the graduation of the colors are going down. It kind of looks like water splashed, you know, like <laughs> like there's movement in it. This one here. Okay. Um, I think the composition is good, except that something did need to be done. It probably just isn't finished, but something needed to be done with that space. And there's not a lot of um, different value used. It just seems... Maybe one or two, well, a couple of shades I used, but it could have used a lot more definition. See, so this one could have been another one that if you had incorporated the platform he was on, would have yeah. added that extra. Um, the object. hand is really good, though. The proportion of the arm doesn't it's seem right in comparison to the hand. Yeah, it, it's really interesting because there's like a lot of all the um, <laughs> shapes in there, but 
It just, it looks like an old saggy person. I think this might have been an attempt at foreshortening the arm and making the hand look like it's closer to you, but it came out a little bit flat, maybe because of the background, maybe because of that the arm wasn't shaded, like it was pointing towards you. I do really like how they pulled off a portion of this one colored piece right here, because it actually looks like the body is facing in that particular angled direction, where it's shading is fo focused on one side, and the lighting is focused on the other side, like the light is going right. through a certain angle. I just felt like if they pushed the values a little bit more, I think that I could have seen the full effect of that, while the, the right, well, the left side of the picture didn't seem so light and muddled into the piece. Like, I need it to bring in a little bit more of the darker value in the other side, even though the lighting was coming from the other. The side that does have the darker value does have a lot of, it shows the muscles through the skin really well with the highlights on them. Yeah, it looks really good. Right. Right up here, this looks really good. I feel like the the deeper browns and the reds should have been brought down to over here to push it a little bit more. Yeah. And then also maybe like a little bit of color for background, maybe like a the cooler shades like the blues and purples that would have been really nice for it too. Maybe do the soft background like in the first one we were talking about. Okay. Or like grounded and then see if it still needs something else. Or like the fading, like in that second piece that we're looking at. The gradient. Mm -hmm. Like could be really dark down here and get lighter up here. Ground it somehow. Maybe if you tried to draw the background or the platform he was sitting on, that could have also added a little bit more. To Tex the yeah, could use texture on that. It looks like they were trying to add too much contrast into the back muscles, whereas they had let it blend a little softer and not had made it so dark in areas where it was lighter, that would have helped it tone it down and then left the parts where the shadow was more intense pop out more and let that stay softer. It's just really dark, yeah. It's very oh, outlined. Okay. She highlighted with color rather than the white. The proportions are really good and um, it looks, yeah, it looks like her. The composition the is really good. The composition, it's interesting. So good use good. of color, <laughs> muted color for the shadowing of the body. It's interesting how she decided to use all warm colors in it, but it gives it a sense that it's like in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very vibrant. The folds from her lifting her eyebrows because she is tilting her head back, it's a very subtle detail but it's something that needs to be noticed so I think by having the lines and having it darker there it's subtle yet it is noticeable because it needs to be to make it make sense. Um, I think the composition is really good but I think that she should not have outlined the whole thing in a dark black color, black, black, black. color. Black. The background color wouldn't matter too much if she had to outline. Mm -hmm. Could have used any of the other colors that she used for the flesh. Yeah. But I mean, she could have used one of the flesh tones that she used to use as a starting point. Yeah, like to the the black. Dark. I wish that rather than using the black outline that you would use like where the darkest parts would have been, you would have done as um, the warm tones did and used actual like colors that you used in the skin. Like yeah. the actual deepest tones of the skin to emphasize where the creases are in the bowl. I actually tried to use like a dark brown, but it didn't show up because I used so much pastel, so black was the only color that actually oh, yeah. showed up. Well, I think she did really good use of blending different colors for the highlight as well as the shadows. Like she used different colors and blended them really well. I wish I would have added more shading in this particular area like you did over here to show that you know this folds in behind your ear, behind your, like, your neck there. Because mm -hmm. right where the earring is, but it's all like the solid uniform brightness, it looks like it's just it's flat. Like if you would put in a shade that, um, from, from this area coming out, it would show that the, it's going behind. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more value in the face, a little more shadows and highlights just to kind of bring out the face a little bit more, like where the cheeks are and where the highlight of the nose is and stuff. Yeah, there's real volume to the figure, but the face is very flat in comparison. I hope that this has provided a very useful model of a critique for you that it gives both vocabulary and style which you can emulate so that you can gain the most out of your critiques and be able to process the comments and implement the improvements.